Real people, real interviews. I just have to say that I object strenuously to your use of the word hilarious. Hard hitting questions. What do you think about feminism? Do you like it? Taking you to the cutting edge of truth. Yeah, well, Last Jedi is one of the worst movies ever made, and it was very clear that Brian Johnson doesn't like Star Wars. Kyle pulls no punches. I want to ask how how you're able to sleep at night. Ethan brings bone-shattering common sense from the top rope. If I may, how double dare you? This is the Babylon Bee Interview Show. Hello there. Welcome to the Babylon B, a brand new interview show that we're doing. We basically, by the way, this is Ethan. That's Kyle. Uh, Hi. We are splitting our show up into a show that's more uh, kind of the weekly news and kind of talking about topics. And then our interviews are going to get their own show. So what this means for you is we're going to be putting out two podcasts a week, generally, whenever we can get an interview for the week. But we'll always have our new show. And uh, so this is our first ever interview exclusive show. And for this episode, we are bringing on Joe Thorne. Kyle, who's Joe Thorne? Joe Thorne is a pastor and a writer and a podcast host. Hmm. And I became familiar with him through his podcast and I uh, thought he'd be a good fit. He's, uh, he's a guy who kind of, uh, he's always struck me as very thoughtful and very chill because a lot of pastors give their hot take on, on whatever, you know, uh, politics and this and that. And whenever there's a controversy on his podcast, he's always very, uh, I don't want to say middle of the road, like riding, riding the fence or anything, but he'll definitely give equal weight to both sides of the discussion hmm. and then kind of, and then kind of conclude with, so let's all just take it down a notch, everybody. <laughs> and you like him because he likes heavy metal and has a giant beard. He, yeah. And he, he is, he's an interesting guy because if you saw him on the street, it would be like, is this guy a, a, a biker, like part of a biker <laughs> gang or, you know, he's got the tats and the beard and the, and he's an ex Satanist. So that's interesting. Yeah. We'll talk to him about that. Yeah. So I thought he'd be a good fit for our very first interview show and the very first pastor we've ever had on the podcast. So without further ado, let's bring on Joe Thorne. Presenting an exclusive Babylon B interview. All right, everyone, we're sitting here uh, digitally across the airwaves, separated by thousands of miles with Joe Thorne. He's th- thousands of miles away. How far is that? Where, I well, I assume he's Joe Thorne. I assume he's in Illinois. Are you in Illinois, Joe? Yeah, yeah. I'm about I don't know, 30 miles west of Chicago in a little town called St. Charles. Okay. So probably thousands, probably yeah. close to a couple thousand miles away. Okay. So Joe Thorne uh, is a pastor, the founding and lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois, author of many books. Mm-hmm. I don't know if many is many the right word. When, 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 do you, when do you get to call yourself the author of many books? <laughs> well, I, I think you have to have seven, right? Seven or more is probably mm-hmm. many. So I'm only five, and my books are super short. They're like bathroom readers. Mm-hmm. So I don't even know. Like if you stapled them all together or glued them all together, it might equal one book. So I, I don't really qualify for the author of many books yet. Oh, okay. So author of several books. <laughs> author of the, a modest stack of bathroom readers. <laughs> uh, yeah, a few, a few bathroom readers. That's a, that's a better way to say it. <laughs> and he also hosts, co-hosts a podcast called Doctrine and Devotion. And writing now, cigars, thing, smoking cars. That thing is pretty sweet. Doctrine and Devotion yeah, is, 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 pretty, is a pretty legit operation, I got to say. Yeah, well, you would say that. <laughs> We, uh, <laughs> this is the doctrine and devotion is how I learned about Joe Thorne. And okay. so yeah. when we started a podcast, so we got to get Joe on at some point and, uh, and here we are. So oh, well, thanks for having me guys. That's, uh, it's an honor. I, uh, I still don't know why you're having me on. Uh, you have <laughs> really interesting and smart people on and, uh, and now you're having me on. So I don't know what it means, but um, I'm game to play. Well, we just realized this morning that we haven't had a single pastor on our show yet. And we felt really oh, bad about okay. that. So you're, you're the first pastor we've had on. And we're like over 30 episodes in here. So we got to start. Well, well, that on. makes dub- doubly honored. I think we're always scared that pastors are going to not be that interesting, but you have a giant beard and stuff. So we're, we feel a little safer with you. Well, unfortunately, I trimmed my beard down really short. Uh, oh, no. For, to surprise my wife. So my I'm not very interesting these days. Uh, um, yeah. 
Sounded like your voice hey, you went up an octave. I don't say, not, yeah, it definitely did. And when I shaved my beard for my wide shave, and I trimmed it down to like a normal beard length, and I walked downstairs, I'm like, what's up, girl? And she looks at me and she goes, eh. Yeah. Like, that was all I got. And it was like, totally, I totally screwed up. I should not have touched it. She's like, you should have left it long. And I was like, you, you told me you don't like the beard. You like it when I had no beard. And she was like, no, no, I'm used to it. So, yeah, the lesson is um, uh, don't trim your beard up. That's yeah, the, the beard is a scapegoat for wives. I, when, when I was dating my mm-hmm. wife, we, we did, uh, we were very adorable. We did alphabetical dates. So like for a, we went to an antique show, B, we went bowling, C, we just did wow. the whole alphabet and we actually worked it out. So where, uh, where X was our wedding night <laughs> and then we went <laughs> well, for, <laughs> for, <laughs> for our, so you played the xylophone. Yeah. We played the xylophone. On. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and then for our, our honeymoon, we went to uh, Yosemite and Zion. So we finished the alphabet with our honeymoon. But anyway, the, the adorable thing was that for Jay, her name is Jessica. So for our Jay one, she got to pick whatever she wanted. It's just her dream date, whatever she, she just got to make the rules. Oh. So for that one, she said I had to shave all my facial hair off because she had never seen me without any facial hair. And the first thing she said when I walked out of the bathroom looking like a giant man baby, she's right. like, oh, oh, put, grow back, grow back immediately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they forget that beard hides the ugly and yeah. the chubby. That's like, what they forget, and I, I have both of that. That's why I have my beard. Yeah, it gives you a jawline of some kind, and without a beard, you just you just a a blob of fat with eyes. Well, not you, you not that. you specifically, Joe. Yeah, me. I mean, no, me. Listen, I, <laughs> before I had a beard, I looked like Caillou. And it's like, uh, like I look like some sickly Canadian kid who's dying of cancer is what I look like. And, uh, no offense it was to Canadian ter- kids I, I, cancer. Uh, well, basically all Canadian kids look sickly. That's a fact, but I'm just saying I look like Caillou specifically. It's that healthcare system. That's what yeah, it is. It's premium. <laughs> it's premium up there. All right, Joe. So since you are the first pastor that we've had on, we wanted to, um, you know, we, we, as we live our Christian lives, we encounter tough decisions. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we want to know right. if, in the road. If, if these, so we have a list of things that we're curious if you think these are sin or not sin. Yeah, so okay. we'd like to read these off to you. Um, we'll take turns reading them. And then, uh, yeah, you can just give us a couple of words or a yes, no, you know, whatever you want to do. Or if, yeah. if you feel really passionately yep. that one of these things is sin, you can, you can kind of do a Jonathan wanna, Edwards sermon for us. If you want to do this and make it cute, you should do it in alphabetical order. Oh, man. Uh, I'm not smart enough. Yeah, that's too much. Oh, um, okay. None of us can be as cute as Ethan and his wife. <laughs> Alphabetical <laughs> dates. All right. Sin or not sin? Vaping like a total cheese bag. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Uh, the cheese. Uh, here's, the, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Uh, I bought a vape. Um like one time in a moment of like, I'm going to, I'm going to stop smoking cigars so I can get a cheaper, like uh, a health insurance, life insurance policy. And I tried to do the vape thing and I, I, I went back to smoking cigars right away and a higher premium because of the sinfulness of being a cheesy doofus vaping. So I'm going to have to say <laughs> I had a similar experience. I was like, you know what? Maybe I could do something that, I don't know. Well, I don't know. I, I figured I'd give it a try, but man, yeah, I felt like such a cheese bag. I couldn't do it. I had to stop. Yeah. I can't like, I felt like a 15 year old e-boy. I yeah. couldn't do it. I just, I, you know, uh, uh-uh. I'll just take the, I'll take the bad breath and the, and the, the shorter life. I'm fine. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Uh, okay. Next one is throwing up the sign of the horns while listening to heavy metal. Oh, no, that's righteousness right there. That's not sin. Are you kidding me? Right. You, you, guys, you guys know you're talking to me, right? <laughs> yeah, that's why we wanted to know. So yeah. now we know we can oh, I, say, I, I, guess, I just got to make sure that, like, because I know, like, there are those guys, those, like the pee boys and whatnot, like those, those haters out there that uh, like to make fun of me because I, or say that I'm wicked because I listen to heavy metal uh, and whatnot. Um, yeah, I'm not apologizing for listening to the best form of music that mankind has ever created. Um, so, yeah, metal horns, always good if you're listening to metal. Amy Grant, you can Google this. There's a picture of Amy Grant throwing up metal horns at one of her concerts. Oh, man. But the discernment blog has had a field day. Settled. 
That's a sin. That's a sin. That's not okay. <laughs> Amy Grant is one of the founding church fathers, so whatever she does, that's, <laughs> that's what we should do. But aren't the horns the Satan, like Satan? Just no, to be clear, it's an anti. It's an anti. Thing. It's it's the devil. It's the devil. You're no, you want the to... devil with your hands, right? All right, now listen. If you, as a former Satanist, <laughs> Wait, really? and as a yeah, and as a as a person who is, has been deep in the mess. Listen, when I was six years old, I had Kiss Destroyer posters on my wall. Like I've been into like rock and roll and metal since my youngest of days. I will tell you the origin of the metal horns uh, and where they came from, if you'd like. Uh, but the shortest version is. Ronnie James Dio is the one who made it popular, and he got it from his grandmother. Uh, it had nothing to do with Satanism. Hmm. Yeah, it's like the evil she eye. Weird... To, she used it to like ward off like oh. evil spirits. Yeah, was like, yeah, that's nice. right. Yeah, yeah, but the old that's world. Weird. Like I'm gonna throw a curse at you. Yeah, I saw Ronnie James Dio live twice the summer before he died. Oh, Stomach wow. cancer. Yeah, sad. Yeah. That was worth eternity in hell. <laughs> 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 all right all right next next, next. one jazzer size uh i don't know i don't know what that is what, what? is that what? <laughs> oh is that Elder, that old you... john travolta movie that's that old john travolta, no, that was movie. john travolta yeah that's a sin it was like a fitness craze in the 80s remember like churches were doing maybe you were a satanist at this time but there was uh churches yeah, that all host, i was they would host jazzer size nights. you probably sacrificed some jazzer sizers while you were saying um, this. No, but just, yeah. They're, they're, they're children. Yeah, but yeah, same thing. Yeah. No, yeah, no, they're like ladies. Hmm. All right, how about, a, how about a well-done steak? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, a well-done steak is definitely a sin. Definitely, uh, I mean, abomination? I don't know. I, a well-done steak is offensive culturally and theologically, yeah. It's even offensive to the animal, I think. Yeah, you know, give the animal some dignity in its death. Let it taste good, yeah. at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that animal worked for that body, and you're just going to shrivel it up into a chunk of bark. Yeah, man. Thinking. Animal provided you with all that fat and juice, and you want to wring it out and make it like leather. It's not good. Yeah. Are you guys the kind of people that will send steak back? <laughs> no, I'm too I, timid. I'm a, a, yeah. I don't send stuff back, but I will let them know. I like to let people know what's up. I like, will, hey. You know, I said, I said medium rare. This is definitely a, a solid medium. It's fine. I don't want to go ahead and eat it. Just make sure your cook specter are watching their watching their it's toes. Stand on their toes. It's like a very I'll passive aggressive <laughs> take. Like I will lie and you know, say feel, it was amazing and get and tip them and never let them know it was horrible. <laughs> oh wow! No, because I'm so low confidence. You know what? I will send back. <laughs> See, like so, you are you guys? Are you guys in California or something? Yeah. Could you tell? Is that a sin? Yeah, out here. So here, talk about sin. Out here in the Midwest, there's something called square cut pizza. And so instead of doing a pie cut where each piece is a little triangle with the fat piece being mm-hmm. crust, they do square cut. Yeah, so it's like, all a bunch of squares. Like tic-tac-toe. Right. Which, right, which is stupid, aggravating, and sinful. And so I have to tell them when I order my pizza at a most place, like, hey, pie cut. Got to be pie cut. I'll say it five times pie cut. If they deliver that pizza and it's square cut, I go take it back. I don't want it. I'm not paying for it. I'm not going <laughs> to no. Bring me a pie. I'm not. I can't. I can't do it. So that is what I will send back. It's a, it's a square cut pizza. You're like the kids that only want the sandwich sliced. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> triangular. triangular. Yeah. I like my pizza spir- uh-huh. spiral cut. But I'm really specific. Oh, you California people are so weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our pizza is always served like on a brick or something. They bring yeah. it out on this weird. Yeah, they cook it in like a, like a incinerator. Anyway, all right. Yeah. Next uh, question: Reading a Doug Wilson article. Oh goodness! <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it qualifies as sin. It's just sad. I would say it's sad. <laughs> Wait, wow! I thought you could guys with beards stuck together. No, no he shaved well, his beard. Yeah. Oh yeah, he shaved you it. Know what? So. We, we used to stick together until that thing called the Civil War. And then there was a division of the beards. That's true. <laughs> the division of the beards. So which side are you saying you were on and Doug Wilson's on in the Civil War? Well, I think we know which side Doug Wilson's on. <laughs> um, I think that, that's rather obvious. Uh, I mean, so yeah, I'm, 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 from, I'm from up north, so, you know. 
Yeah. I'm uh, I'm not the part of the Confederacy. I'm good. It's sad to hear you. Union. Sad to hear you sided with the bad guys on that one. I know. <laughs> I know. But listen, our war of northern aggression was a necessity. Let me just say it. We had to do it. <laughs> okay. Up next, getting a tattoo of John Piper's face. Not a sin. No, definitely not a sin. What if it's a tramp no, stamp? Funny. What if it's a tramp stamp? Uh, no, if, not, if not a sin. If not you're a, using no. John Piper's face to in, encourage people's eyes to sin. To wander. Yes, to wander in bad direction. <laughs> to the, to the, to my back stack? <laughs> what, what's There's the harm in that? Yeah, no much danger there, <laughs> no, I guess. No hey, everyone's got <laughs> their thing. Yeah, I, I, I suppose. I think if, listen, if you're putting Noel Piper, that's a shit. But John Piper, <laughs> not not a sin. That's true. That's actually interesting. Like, if somebody's eyes are wandering where they shouldn't be, and then suddenly there's John Piper reaching out to them <laughs> in their moment of sin. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, if John Piper is like giving the, the you speak, that, that might be the best antidote, right? <laughs> yeah. If we could somehow get some hackers to put John Piper imagery, uh, on uh, very various locations, billboards, internet, like like sort of like pop ups, yeah, Piper, Piper pop ups. Up. Oh, yeah, pop up Piper. Yeah, there's some money there too. I bet you could you could help people and make money. I like that. Yeah. Well, if there's any hackers out there listening to the Babylon Bee podcast, <laughs> get on it. Ethical, Christ centered hackers. It's ethical hacking. Every time you search for porn in your browser, a John Piper head pops up, mm-hmm. and then gives you some of that Christian hedonism wisdom. I, li- I like this idea. Yeah, it's called a pipe up. Starts ranting at you about how Piper. <laughs> uh, you know, I met uh, I met John Piper one time, and uh, I was telling about my, about my dad and he, how he was converted recently, and um, and he, you know, I, I said he, he read your book and he read he read Tim Keller's book, and he liked Tim Keller's more. And I don't know why I told him, but uh, <laughs> I you told I, for John some Piper. Reason, yeah, I told that to John Piper. And uh, it was, which was weird because, like, I liked John Piper. I wasn't trying to dog him. It just kind of, I don't know. I, I was, I was just trying to get in fact, I guess. And he, he didn't. He, he smiled at me. He's like, "Oh, that's nice." <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> and then I had a bunch of people yelling at me about it afterwards, like how rude it was. I wasn't <laughs> trying to. Are you just like starstruck and you didn't know what to say? And the, these random facts are just <laughs> spilling into your head, like oh, Tim Keller's book is better than yours. I, I don't think I would starstruck. I just think I'm. I don't have a lot of, I don't have much of a filter. Uh, so it, it just kind of, it just, things just kind of come out. Just trying to get him to pipe down a little bit. I'm sorry. <laughs> Literally. Stop it with the Piper puns. <laughs> All right. How about, um, baptizing a baby? Well, clearly that's a sin. Yeah. That's an easy one. I could throw you a softball. <laughs> okay, about- so listen, for the record, for the record, um, I love my Presbyterian brothers. They are our smarter, more sophisticated siblings. And all love to our Presbyterian, Pato Baptist, baby sprinklers. No hate. And um, I just, we just disagree on that. I just want, in case, because I don't know who's listening to your podcast. But <laughs> I, if they don't know who I am, they can think I'm really hating on them. I'm not hating on my Presbyterian brothers. Our audience is entirely made up of discernment bloggers that are getting ready oh, to destroy you. <laughs> I'm going to have a week. I can't wait. <laughs> Uh, following Beth Moore on Twitter. Uh, well, if it, if it's wrong, I don't want to be right. <laughs> Wait, hang on, I got to work that out of my head. <laughs> well, I, I follow her on Twitter, so I don't know what to say. <laughs> well, yeah. that, listen, I, I you just got to admit you're in are, sin. People are, why do people freak out about Beth Moore so much? I don't know. Like, I, like, you're the pastor. I'm, you a compliment, I'm a complimentarian. Uh, I like, I agree with the Danvers statement. If your listeners know what that is, I don't know how dumb your listeners are. So I got to qualify everything. <laughs> and, um, what's that? <laughs> so like, I'm good. I'm, 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 I'm like, I, I, so I, I have too much in agreement with most of the complementarians and them. Like, but I, I, boy, they really seem to be jonesing for, uh, for some best more. And I don't know why they're so, so angry. Uh, yeah. So I, yeah, she seems like a, she seems like a neat lady. I don't know. I don't know her. She has some, she has, some, I'm a reformed Baptist. So my theology is very particular and very specific. And we tend to be a little uptight about doctrine. And so I see people like Beth Moore having some doctrinal issues. I disagree with, and I'm like, Oh, I don't think that's a really good idea. Or that's very safe. I don't think she's a crazy 
like heretic that needs to have a house drop on her or something. I think she's just a, uh, <laughs> she seems like a nice lady. That's all I'm going to say about that more. Hmm. Is that what you do with heretics? You drop houses on them? Well, Burn the them. lady heretics. Yes. Yes. The lady, the lady heretics. <laughs> all right. Uh, how about following John MacArthur on Twitter? I don't think I follow him. He's mean. I do. He he's little, he's little me. So yeah, man? I don't think it's a sin. Hmm? Does John MacArthur have a Twitter? That's actually unlikely. I, I think he probably has one that his staffers uh, <laughs> yeah. run. Yeah, man. John MacArthur one time wrote an article uh, about these these hipster X29 churches that are trying to get people into their churches with beer. And he actually linked to my church, the church that I pastor, oh, in man. that article. Which I'm sure he didn't write. I doubt this post. I know he's not going to Google search, you know. I, I don't think. But anyway, he linked to it. And ever since then, I'm like, man, I've been a fan for so long. I don't know. Like, we're not, we're like the most simple, boring church in the world. Like, I don't understand why we, we get, we got targeted by him. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm very grateful for John MacArthur. I just feel like, um, yeah, he needs to chill. That's all. That's good advice for all of us. Isn't it? Just chill. I could, yeah, I, I need to chill. We all need to Maybe chill. what about chilling out and reading Relevant Magazine? Is that a sin? Sin or not Date sin? Date film and print? Ooh, wow. Ooh. Savage. Burn. No, I didn't know. <laughs> 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 I thought those went out when NUMA videos stopped being released. Oh, I, wow. I thought I, I, NUMA videos? I don't know. It wasn't NUMA. That was a Rob Bell's thing, right? Oh, I thought I was thinking NUMA NUMA. Yes. Not Numa Numa. No, that's different. Oh, okay. That's not Numa video. <laughs> Rob Bell did these really hit videos where he talked about. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, didn't really say much, but he would like. Yeah. yeah. But the production quality was off the right, chart. Right. So so attractive. All right. Uh, reading pulpit and pen. Sin or not sin? Uh, not not good for you. I'm going to say sin on that one. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not just because they've done like three articles on me. It's it's it, it just. Yeah, I don't think it's good for you. I don't know how those guys manage because you know we're we're doing some prep for this interview, and they always manage to get up in the top, yeah, like two or three of the Google results whenever you Google somebody. I, I don't know how because I don't think that many people read these discernment blogs, but they must use certain words that just come off to Google's algorithm as being controversial or interesting, and so they always pop up. Yeah, that's one of the Wait, first so things you I Google, learned. You Google my name, and pulpit and pen comes up. Yeah. Yeah, one of the first things I learned about uh, you is that you're an angry elf. <laughs> well, that's true. Well, yeah, I'm not, first of all, I'm an angry dwarf. <laughs> I'm angry dwarf. dwarf. Yeah, well, you're I'm, more of a dwarf, sure. Elves are not that short. Dwarves, I'm definitely... All right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay, fine. I try to own as much of the online presence as I can, but apparently... I got. High, I, I guess I'm getting associated with some haters. Okay. Oh, no, but yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know if you're associated with them. It's just them talking smack. Yeah, they managed to get their their like hate their anti Joe, yeah. their hot take. Yeah, hot take is up there. It's so it's funny because like I don't even <laughs> I don't know why I, why it matters. Yeah, yeah. It's not like I'm a mega church pastor uh, or I'm on TV or yeah I don't it's know what it flattering, is flattering right when people have, like take time out of their day to spend like an hour an hour entire hour talking about you and that's, it's kind of flattering yeah yeah it's yeah. sort of like when a gay guy hits at me at the restaurant <laughs> yeah just like that <laughs> happens <laughs> well what I'm saying is I'm not trying I'm, what I'm yeah, saying is, is like you're hey, kind I, of a bear I, right? I think wow. I'm just saying like I, what I'm saying is, is <laughs> I, as an orthodox Christian as a Protestant I think sex should be limited to a relationship between married men and women Sad. But it's still flattering when a gay guy says, or at least implies that, you know, you're handsome. I was like, oh, you know, I can appreciate that. Yeah, that's a weird feeling. I've had that happen, so actually. So, pulpit and pen. Discernment bloggers are like gay guys. <laughs> <laughs> just to be clear, I, I want to be clear, that's I what you're saying. Say you're like being, I just like being hit on by a gay guy. <laughs> we found the Great. title of the episode. <laughs> Joe Thorne calls. <laughs> Pulpit and pen. Uh, I'm gonna, now they're going to they're gonna have new, new fuel <laughs> to throw to. on the... On the Joe Thorne tire, yeah. yeah we, awesome. We've already talked about him too much. We, we've given yeah. more publicity. Yeah, I wasn't looking him up now. Yeah. Uh, final sin: drinking IPAs when there's perfectly good bourbon bourbon nearby. 
Well, I'm definitely a bourbon guy. So yeah, yeah, I would I would agree there. That's a sin. Bourbon over beer, uh, it's better for you, and um, and it tastes better. So yeah. What about drinking I'm, I'm, IPAs I'm at all when there's like great stouts and porters around to drink? I'm not a beer. I I, I like an IPA. I like a stout, uh, mm. but I just don't really care. Sad. And if I'm, if I'm honest, I'd probably rather just eat a loaf of bread <laughs> because that's basically <laughs> what I'm getting when I drink beer. So I uh, I like uh, I'm super easy on beer. Don't really care. But uh, in terms of spirits, yeah, a good bourbon. That's my favorite whiskey. Hmm. So now all of our that's listeners all know all the various sins and not sins. So thank you, uh, Joe Thorne, for our first pastoral uh, advice that we've given on this podcast. I'm glad. I'm glad to have been able to to help out. You know, it's um, it's not every day, you know, that a, that a that a person is given the opportunity to to call sin sin when the Bible doesn't do it. You know, <laughs> and then I think we do get that like, opportunity yeah. every day. <laughs> do, we, do we get that opportunity? Every day? No, I I thought I thought some discernment bloggers had the corner market on that. But okay. All right. So let's talk a little bit about doctrine. And devotion, dun, dun, dun. and I don't mean the name of your podcast. Oh, oh, it just got less interesting. <laughs> yeah, but what it actually stands for. So, sure. uh, I mean, you know, you, I think you're big on uh, confessionalism. I know you're big on confessionalism, and uh, yeah. you know, you're a 1689 London Baptist Confession of Faith guy. So how does uh, subscribing to a, a very specific theological statement like that, I, I mean, how do you think that affects the Christian life? Well, confessionalism uh, specifically is helpful in a couple of ways. Um, on the one hand, it puts you within a stream of orthodoxy that um, is is deeply historical, and it shows your connection to not just your tribe, but other tribes. So, because I embraced the 1689 Second London Confession, um, not only does it connect me to Baptists throughout history, going back to the 17th century, but it also connects me to Presbyterians and Congregationalists, because it's it's built upon the Westminster and the Savoy. Um, and so, a confession can show the commonality that you have with other like-minded believers historically, and um, which is like, wow, we have a lot in common with our Presbyterian brothers and sisters. Uh, not everything. So there's differences and distinctions uh, without the, the kind of division that means we can't partner together in any way. So I like it. It brings about a sense of unity. Um, it helps to to show us that we can have some pretty strong familial ties, even though we're, you know, we're, we're, we share differences. Um, but then it's also because it, it, there's a historical significance to it. There's a lot of resources around the creeds and the confessions that um, are very practical in nature. So you will have uh, sermons and uh, what do we call expositions of those confessions and creeds, uh, catechism uh, that, that you can resource. There's a lot of material that's been put out there about those um, documents that you, that, you, that you have access to. And then finally, I would say that the emphasis, not for all of our history, but for much of the history of Reformed theology, there is an emphasis on experimental Calvinism or experiential theology. And you'll find that in, not just in the sermons, and in the, uh, but also in many of the treatises that, uh, that, that have come through um, uh, some of our more prolific writers, because the, the desire was for these theological truths not to just be comprehended and articulated, but to be believed, uh, received, experienced, and put to use. They were really big on uses of doctrines, and so that those are those are probably three reasons I would say that there's a, a lot of help that comes from people that embrace a confession or a creed. And what's the difference between something like the 1689 and the mega church down the street that throws up a statement of faith that the oh the main yeah the the main difference is that 
a, a confession like the Westminster or the 1689 was put together by a team of the most brilliant theologians uh, of their day. And the mega church uh, had their doctrinal statement written by a bunch of guys that got BAs from Bible colleges. And so uh, not really the same thing, right? It's like I could write a statement of faith, but I'm not going to do the same kind of work as the best theologians of a generation who uh, are working together to put together the clearest and most comprehensive and useful document. So, in other words, it's it's not going to be as helpful. It's not going to be as accurate. Plus, it disconnects you from... Uh, it, 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 I guess it creates more distance between you and the rest of the church and church history than using a confession would. Plus, why, why are you so unique? You're so unique in your own peculiar weird theology that you just can't find some historic document that you can stand behind. There is one out there. Your, your, your theology is that weird and unique? I don't buy it. Yes, yes, I am that unique. Thank you for asking. Oh, okay, I guess I have to buy it. <laughs> I'd like to shift gears here and ask Satanism, why'd you leave it? Uh, well, it wasn't giving me my best life now. That's for sure. <laughs> um, I can tell you that. No, look, man, I, when I was, um, I was a little kid asking all kinds of questions. Why are we here? What's the point in life? Why is there suffering? Uh, and I didn't get any answers. My family didn't go to church. I'd never been to church. Um, there was no God in the picture, nothing like that. Plus, I was a little kid with a real smart mouth, and so I got beat up a lot. And um, so I'm, I was the kid who would, like, I could make fun of you and burn you good, but then you'd beat me up. And then I'd be walking back home, and once I got a block away, I'd yell, and you'd look back, and then I'd flip you the finger and run off. <laughs> and then the next day, you'd beat me up again because I, I did that. So I would, that was the little kid that I was, and um, I, I eventually got tired of of getting picked on and not having what I wanted. You know, I, I wanted, I wanted to be a certain way. I, there were certain things I wanted in life. And I began to look into a witchcraft and then the occult. And then I got into Satanism through Anton LaVey's uh, brand of Satanism. You wrote the Satanic Bible. And then um, from, from that more of an atheistic brand of Satanism, I got into theistic Satanism um, and so this is all going on in the eighties. And, um, what I found was that I got all the stuff that I wanted, right? Oh, I finally started getting girlfriends and I got a certain reputation. And even though I didn't play up the Satan angle, like nobody would say, like Joe's obviously a Satanist, I was getting all the stuff that I wanted. I had started to get friends and a group of guys that respected me and, and nobody picked on me anymore. I learned how to fight and all this stuff. So like, it really felt as if the devil was giving me, uh, what I wanted. And around this time, um, I introduced a friend of mine who was having similar struggles as I was having a couple of years earlier. And so I introduced him to Satanism, and he started to go down this path. Now, what happened to him, uh, the short story that some people are going to find hard to believe, is that uh, he began to experience demonic oppression and even possession that I had seen, that other people had seen. Um he was a tortured soul that was miserable. And the last time I saw him, I was holding him in my arms after this crazy, um, event. Uh, and he was literally crying in my arms in front of other people saying that he, he, he's a slave and he wants to be set free. Just, you know, he's cursed. And then, uh, he died in a car wreck. Uh, we were both, I guess, 17 years old. So, when that happened, I felt really guilty about getting him into that stuff and what it had done to his life. It really messed up his life. And I began to question uh, the things that I was asking earlier, right? What's the purpose in life? Why am I here? Because while I was getting worldly satisfaction, um, I wasn't getting any answers to my bigger questions. And so as I began to wrestle with my guilt and my discouragement over uh Satanism and the impact that it had on another friend's life, I, uh, I began to pull away from that. And that was around the time I heard the gospel for the first time when I was a senior in high school. Hmm. Yeah. I remember I had friends who were like dabbling in Satanism when I was in high school and 
It was all it was all very appealing. It, was, it had it had some good kind of good marketing because it was kind of all the stuff a teenager would be like, "Yeah, why isn't religion like this?" That's all. I love. Right? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's and, and like the Levian brand of Satanism yeah. is just basically pure American religion. Is really yeah. what it is. It's yeah. just it's just got a, it's just got the cool vibe because yeah. all it is is hey, live for yourself. You're your own god. Indulge mm-hmm. the flesh. Don't listen to anybody. Don't take crap off of anybody. I mean, that's that's all that it is. There is no God. There is no devil. There's just you. Mm-hmm. So, so live your best life now. Like that's really what it was. <laughs> and uh, and so it, it is. It's very appealing because I get to put myself first. But it's filled with inconsistencies. It's it's just as hypocritical as any worldly form of Christianity that isn't biblical. Um, it, it, it's it's a goof, but it is appealing, especially to the younger kids. Yeah, and it's got shock factor. I had a. Um Random Anton LaVey story is the, a girl that I dated in high school. Her dad used to walk Anton LaVey's daughter to school in the morning. They were neighbors. <laughs> wow. And he said he had like, the, I don't know, I can't remember if it's like an albino lion or something. He had some kind of pets. Anyway. <laughs> Side story. Right. <laughs> so you, you got, you've you been in California this whole time then? No, he lived in California. He lived, a, he, yeah. I knew him in Oregon, He uh, where I'm from. Where? But he lived, he lived, he grew up in California, but he lives now right. in Oregon, which is where I'm from. And that's where I heard this story. He, he found yeah. us through the Jesus movement. Oh, that's great. Where can people learn more about Joe Thorne and all your bathroom readers? All right. So, uh, the most important thing, uh, that would probably benefit anybody who's interested in the ramblings, doctrineanddevotion.com is where you will find our podcast. That's Jimmy Fowler and I, two of the pastors here at Redeemer Fellowship. We talk theology and we bust chops and laugh. It's a good time. Uh, episodes come out every Monday and Thursday, so lots of content, and I um, think you might enjoy it. So head on over there. I'm on Twitter, at Joe, basically on Joe Thorne. At Joe Thorne, you'll find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. But, I, you know, I don't really care about this. Instagram me. I, I'm on Instagram. I, I'm more likely to engage <laughs> Check, find Joe on TikTok. Mm-hmm. I see Joe. Yeah, I don't. I don't videos. post anything on TikTok. <laughs> I just like I watch beard growth, time lapse videos, beard growth, time lapse, or beard cutting yeah. <laughs> videos. We want to see it. Enjoying this hard hitting interview? Become a Babylon B subscriber to hear the rest of this conversation. Go to babylonb.com slash plans for full length ad free podcasts. Kyle and Ethan would like to thank Seth Dillon for paying the bills, Adam Ford for creating their job, the other writers for tirelessly pitching headlines, the subscribers, and you, the listener. Until next time, this is Dave D'Andrea, the voice of the Babylon Bee. And without a beard, you just you just a, a blob of fat with eyes.